about water and urban places, this is ID Anthro. Hey everyone, and welcome back to ID Anthro, where this week we are interrupting our recent regular front of mind series. Don't worry, it will be back next week with a great chat with Amali Wright from Landscapeology. The topic is swimming in the Brisbane River. But this week we are interrupting it because I've had the chance over the past couple of weeks to watch a really interesting project grow and evolve and it's still going on right now. And so I wanted to make an up-to-date, up-to-the-minute video to dig into that project a little and what I've found interesting in it and what I've learned from it. Now this is not my project, but it's a project that I was asked to make some videos about to capture the process. And the project is the Davidson Street Creek Restoration Project that Healthy Land and Water is currently running. There are a bunch of other partners involved with that. I will pop them up on the screen now so they get some recognition for that. Bunch of other partners there. And this is, like, it's a creek restoration project. It's a small, it's a small section of creek, um, Anogra Creek in Ashgrove, Newmarket sort of area. Davidson Street's the street if you actually want to come down and check it out. It's a creek restoration project, but it has a slight difference. And it's the difference that we're gonna talk about. The difference is co-design. This is a topic that seems to be getting a little, or a process, I should say. It's a topic, but it's also a process. That's been getting a little bit of attention in creek restoration in Southeast Queensland over the past, past kind of 12 to 18 months or so. The first example of this was the Small Creek Project that Ipswich City Council is constructing right now. Small Creek, but awesome big project. But Healthy Land and Water have now picked up this co-design concept and are applying it to Davidson Street. Now what co-design is, so in a typical project, like a typical project with community consultation, what you might see is a project site would get selected, a project team would be brought together, the team would come up with some concepts, a design perhaps, and then go to the community and consult with them. In co-design, it gets flipped the other way around. Sure, there's probably a site that's been picked, there's a project team, but before anything gets put down on paper, any concepts, any designs are developed, the team goes out and consults widely and honestly and deeply with the community for whatever site. And co-design is not unique to creek restoration. It's a much broader process that's applied to all sorts of projects of which the community might have an interest. But in this instance, this is ID Anthro, so we talk watery things, and that means we're talking creek restoration. So in this instance, Healthy Land and Water, Davidson Street Project, have been going out and talking with the local community through this co-design process to figure out what they would like. You know, there's this broad, like, obviously there's some parameters for this project of what, you know, what fundamentally it's trying to achieve, but then talking to the community right up front about, okay, within those parameters, what would you like to see? Because even within those parameters, there's a broad spectrum of different possibilities of what could be developed. And so I'd heard about this being applied at Small Creek and thought, sweet, that sounds like a great idea. I really like it. But for me to see it firsthand brought home for me how powerful this is. Because what I saw was its ability not to, like, not necessarily to deliver on everything the community wants. That's not the purpose of it. It's not, the purpose is not for the community to come out and say, look, we want this, 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 and this, and the project team goes away and delivers all of it. Although obviously that's great if they can, but it's not really the purpose. The purpose is more to get an, okay, here are a bunch of things that we really like and would love to see here, but also some stuff that we don't want to see. And it was almost the don't want to sees that I, latched onto most or that I found most powerful because it really shapes it like it's this ability to just make sure you don't really blunder into something and so in this instance we're at this park at the end of Davidson Street and it's this really nice kind of integrated riparian corridor transport corridor there are lots of weeds in the um, riparian area no doubt there's some issues with the creek from a health point of view but what it is, it's this lovely corridor, and the community came back at this workshop that was held just the day before yesterday. I've come back to you know film a few more shots. And we were just the clarity of the community, of everyone that I heard, maybe it wasn't everyone, but everyone that I heard saying, look, 
we fundamentally already really love this. There is stuff that we'd like to see tweaked and improved, but fundamentally, we like the fact that it's already really natural. We like the fact that it's really shady. We like the fact that it's not an active, an active park in the sense that it doesn't have play equipment, it doesn't have bubblers, it doesn't have toilets. It's actively used in that people pass through here, they ride bikes through here, they jog, they run, they walk. And we love all of that but we don't want it to become more active. We don't want it to become a hub. We love the bird life. Can you hear the kookaburra right now? Or the kookaburras right now? There are so many birds around here. We love all of that. We're happy that there's a project coming on that's going to do work in here and improve it. But please keep the same fundamental character, which is natural, low key, simple recreation. And saying things like, look, what we don't want is we don't want a playground in here. There's a playground in the park across the other side there. We don't, for example, want exercise equipment here because we don't want trainers coming down here. And hearing that up front, I was like, wow, that's really powerful for the design team because they could have been looking at this and going, okay, sweet. So we're going to put in this stuff so the community can use it more. And I just saw how just, just how clearly hearing that and also hearing the history of the site and hearing how it had changed over time. I'll come back to the history in a sec. But hearing the community desires up front has just so clearly set, like taken the scope that's like, we're broadly doing this, but there was lots of play on a whole bunch of different spectrums and going, okay, we're doing this and these are some appropriate things. And now the design team, wow, kookaburra heaven. The uh, design team, can go and work within that to come up with a concept that is far more likely that the community are going to embrace. Hearing about the past, that's the other powerful thing. I've been told about this at Small Creek, about the power, um, actually I mentioned Amali before, Amali was involved at Small Creek. Amali had told me about the power of having the community come down and be like, okay, hey look, this is the history we've seen, these things here, all this stuff that in, I think in Amali's words, you couldn't have found in a thousand hours of searching through a library. And Amali does love searching through libraries, as you'll see in next week's episode of ID Answer. So just to be able to hear the history of this site and to hear that, okay, going back 30 years, there in fact wasn't a tree here. So there's already been a bunch of really good work put in here. And hearing that there has previously, there are active, for example, community groups, community bush care groups uh, upstream from here and possibly downstream as well. And that there used to be one active at this site, but for whatever reason, it's fallen away over time. And all this history and this context is really useful because that's like, okay, you know, the areas that are upstream are in better nick, but it's because the community group are able to do stuff to maintain it. If this area needs to be, or this area wants to be in better nick long-term, or if we're putting in a solution that needs some maintenance long-term, then perhaps we need to consider that in the context of whether a community group is going to emerge here to look after the the riparian planting and so on and so forth it was so powerful to hear hear that up front to then just be able to figure out not exactly everything not design it in one day but to be able to get some parameters from which to start a design and i loved it it was this probably honestly me explaining to this to you in a video probably hasn't done anything to really help it because i'd had a marley explain it to me and i'd been like, okay, I get it, I like the idea, but it wasn't real to me until I saw it. So perhaps the point of this video, perhaps actually the end point of this is to say, look, if you ever get the process, to, if you get the, ever get the opportunity to see a co-design process in action, maybe even if it's not a creek restoration probe, maybe if it's not watery at all, not even related to your area of interest or your topic, I would highly encourage you to go along and watch it you don't even necessarily need to participate in it. For me making the video, it was very interesting because I wasn't getting sucked into it as a participant in any way, shape or form. And obviously I, you know, like the place and have ideas about what make it, might make it nice. Not anywhere near where I live, so I have no right to have a say in that. But for me videoing it and just being that fly on the wall to observe from the outside is really powerful. So I encourage you, if, if you ever get the opportunity to go along and observe, even if it's a co-design that's not in your area or not an area that you're interested in, to see that at work for me was really useful and you might find it useful too and you might learn something from it and maybe even want to go and apply it in a project of your own. Okay, 
that's the episode. Thank you for tuning in. A regular Front of Mind series will be back next week with Amali Wright as our guest talking about swimming in the Brisbane River. Okay, we will see you then. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. Before you go, our best episodes come from your questions. This knowledge base, these discussions that are idea intro, improve with your contribution. So if there's a topic, an idea, a concept that you would like us to explore, come and ask us. You know where to find us. www.ideanthro.com slash contact. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and that place you get your good podcast from. You know where to find us. We look forward to hearing from you. We'll see you soon.